Okay everyone, today I wanted to do a short little video that people have been asking me for and that's how I did the liquid frisket layering on the MIG here. Uh, it's just one of the steps I've used to, to weather the, the, the paint here. Uh, reference photos of MIG show a lot of layers of degradation in the, in the base colors. Uh, and after sharing pics uh, online of, of when I was doing, some people have asked how to do that. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I've painted up uh, uh, a wing here, uh, from a uh, paint mule wing, uh, with the same colors that I'm using on the MIG. And in this case, it's light uh, green gray, MRP92. Uh, and that's been black based over a layer of black Steinle res here. Uh, and, and I want to emphasize that this is a layering thing, so the first layer is going to be your, your black basing over, over the black primer with the color. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in this video because I did another video. You can check the, uh, the YouTube channel or the Facebook page and find the video on how I black base, but that's the start. Now for the, the liquid frisket step, uh, what I use here is this incredible white mask liquid frisket. It's by Graphics. You can get it locally at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, uh, I believe. Or you can just order it on Amazon. It's a good bit cheaper, uh, it appears. I think it's like, I got I got this bottle at Hobby Lobby because I didn't want to wait. It was like $15 uh, with 40% off, but I think it's only like 7 or $8 on Amazon. So it still works out cheaper, especially if you have Prime for free shipping. Uh, the first thing I do is just lay down uh, the normal base color. Uh, like I said, in this case, it's light green gray. And then I'm going to alter that. I think what people want to see is the actual step of... of uh, getting the frisket on. So that's what I'm going to show here. I use a sponge. Uh, this stuff comes in the Edward um, Brassen and, and, and uh, Photo Etch pack, or not the Photo Etch packs, but it comes, in, it comes in a lot of their packs. And I have a lot of it. I have a shit ton of it, a whole drawer uh, that I've collected over the years. Uh, but I suppose any kind of sponge works. Uh, this works well. Uh, what I do is just pinch off a piece like that, as you can see. And then I'm going to clamp it in the tweezers. Um, just like that so I have a way to work it. Another thing I like to do is I get a piece of paper because you, you need to get most of it off so I just use a little piece of paper like this. Now don't shake this stuff, I kind of just stir it like that. And it just starts by dipping the sponge into it and kind of wipe off the sides like that. And that's it, you can could, you could just see it going on. It doesn't have to be heavy. Now, the sponge does kind of make a repeated pattern so you can push it different pressures. The harder you push it, the more you're going to put on there. But kind of just go over and then once it starts drying, you don't want to go over it because it's just going to pull it up. Kind of move that out of the way. But that's that. So it's on, it's going to dry a minute. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of the green gray into a little tattoo cup here. Oh, got to get some. There we go. Let's just get a little bit of the base color in there. And now we're just going to alter it a little bit. Now the first layer I'm going to do, I'm going to use aircraft green gray which is the British interior color and it's basically just a little a slightly darker version of that color uh, it seems to be a little bit cooler too now this is not precise this is not science here you just want to alter the base color uh, just enough that it's going to look different now what colors you're going to use it just depends on on how you want to change it okay don't get too hung up on you know ratios and and mixing and all that just alter the base color just a little bit okay now that's in there, so I'm gonna use a pipette to, that's how I, I mix it, just squirt it in and out of the pipette, that's gonna mix it. Now, grab the airbrush that's sitting over here. Now I put the ultra color in there. Now I was using the airbrush for the, for the base color and I had some alcohol sitting in it to kind of loosen it up. So I'm just going to spray all that out. And you can see the color's a good bit darker here. Let me turn the compressor off. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now I have the alter color. I'm not going to go over the whole thing, just in spots. And I'm going to back off and do it lightly. Just in spots. Uh, it's not coming out. Okay. 
I mean, you can see there's not very much difference in the color at all. Okay? Now that's good enough. Now I'm going to spray that color out. Now, just give it a second because using lacquers here, they dry really fast, so we don't need to wait too long. Okay? Now I'm going to rub all of it off. And this first layer is very, very light. I'm, I don't even know if the camera's picking it up. I might not have got the color dark enough. We're just going to go with the second layer here. Oh, that's too much. You can just wipe it off if that happens. You need to dry it off of there a good bit. Okay. Now again, base color. Another color I like to use to alter the, the, ba the base color, especially greens. Uh, this dark slate gray is a Royal Air Force color, MRP-117. It's a dirty, uh, dirty uh, gray that, that works great for, for kind of switching stuff up, making it a little grungy. And that's what I'm going to do next is use that here. And again, not too much. Okay, don't do this over the model. Don't mix the paint over the model. That's a problem. Uh, you know, if we did that on, a, on the actual model, we would have to fix it, but I'm just going to ignore that because it's just going to take too much time to mess with that. And we're going with the another, another layer of the darkened base color here. I'm going to shoot the previous color out. Okay. And like I said, just ignore that. There's nothing I can do about that. I don't. That's unfortunate. But and again, not all over the place. Just kind of in random spots. Okay. Now the frisket should be dry by now. And in the interest of, the, I'd let it dry for a couple more minutes personally. But wipe it away. And see now we have another layer there. Now I'm gonna do it again. And you might have to switch your sponge piece up. Once that stuff dries on the sponge, it becomes kind of goofy to try to use it. So if it's giving you trouble, just just change it out. Okay, I'm gonna go a little heavier with that now. I'm gonna discard that piece of sponge. If we do another layer, I'm gonna I'm gonna change it up a little bit. Now, actually, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go with the straight gray, slate gray, and I think I did that actually on the actual model. Because if you back off, especially when you get the frisket on dark, uh, heavier, when you back off like that, there we go. Now, here's a trick. I'm going to go back to the base color. I'm gonna lighten it. Now I gotta I didn't shake this up before I started the video like I did the other stuff. Give me a second. There's not a lot in there, so again, this isn't exact. 
Don't expect this to be exact. Oh, we're gonna need another piece of sponge. There we go. Now, gonna wipe most of it off. Okay, now we have the lighter color here. Uh, mix it up. Uh, that's pretty light. That might be too light. This is really just about the process and not the colors. I've already done it on the MIG and it, it looks good how I like it. It looks like I, like I want, so. It's very subtle. Liquid brisket's already dry. Wipe it away. It, this stuff is really easy to wipe away and it doesn't seem to damage the paint. And there you have it. That's three, four layers right there. And, and that's just kind of what I did on the MIG. Uh, kind of same thing uh, overall. Uh, once you start to do it over a whole service and then with the gray over here, uh, I'm not going to do that because there's no point. But but when you have the other colors butting up to it, it, it all kind of just starts to blend together. Now, uh, the make here is in, in a state of decaling still, so it's a little shiny. Uh, so the reflectiveness of the gloss coat is kind of going to dent it a little bit once we flatten this back down. And then we start putting the filters over. Uh, filters and, and the washes over, um, it's really going to pop it and bring it to life. Uh, we did the same thing on the bottom here with the grays. You can see on this wing. Uh, just the same thing, lighten and darken the base color and, and go over it and then just remove the frisket and you end up with a nice, uh, it, it works a lot like salt but uh, I found with salt, salt can uh, leave stains on the on the paint and, and clears if you're, if you're using clears. Uh, so this is just kind of an alternative. You can change the size of your sponge here. Uh, you can use a bigger piece or a, little, a smaller piece and, and just go over. Um, and create all, all kinds of effects you could even if you wanted to use something other than the base color say well, let's just say we wanted some grunge we could do grunge as well. well these are much bigger spots I didn't wipe it off as much but it, it just shows you can use different sizes different patterns so you go with that and uh, I have some some exhaust soot. I have, let's just see what the exhaust soot looks like. It's a matte clear. Now, I wouldn't use this on the on the surface of something like this, probably. You could use it on something that, that's uh, supposed to be a little dirtier, maybe. I know some uses of of uh, the salt type technique is to put more of a grungy layer than an, uh, another version of the base color over it. And it's going to mix in here. This exhaust set is going to mix in here with the with the green that's already in there. It should be interesting. Let's see what happens. I'm going to mix it up. Frisket's not quite dry, but I really don't care about that. It just wipes away. It's really easy. Well, that's kind of subtle. But that's it, basically. That's all I really, I really did. There, it's not. There's not a lot to it now. This is a rough and fast and messy. Uh, just for the interest of making the video as short as possible, I didn't want to go into deep detail. Uh, so it's not as, as precise as, as it really is on the MIG, but uh, that that gives you the idea. The, I think what people wanted to know the most was how to sponge this stuff on. And that's it. Just dip it in, get it mostly off, and not like that. <laughs> that's the nice thing about this stuff. It's water-soluble, so you can just wipe it away. But 
That's it. Just do that and spray over it. Whatever color you want. The colors are going to be up to you. You're going to have to work that out yourself on whatever you're working on. I can't do that for you. That's where you're going to have to think for yourself. Hopefully that helps. Uh, and I'll see you the next time we decide to put a video together. Thanks.